Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH. Today, we're gonna to take a look at these two four two and a half gig ethernet systems. They're a little different and that small difference actually makes a pretty huge deal when you get down to it. And so what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna look at both of these systems. I'm gonna explain the differences, show some of the similarities, show just some of the really fun things, frankly, that are in these uh, that I just really enjoy. And overall, I think we're gonna have a great time. So let's get to it. Okay, so let's talk about the differences between these two units because they're really actually pretty darn similar. This one over here has four Intel i225 NICs. Now we've seen the i225 in a number of systems. We've seen four, we've seen six in a system. We've seen all those kinds of things, but this is a V4 system. So this is a latest revision. And there are some major differences between this and some of the previous generation ones that we've seen. Now this one over here is the newer top 10 unit, which is actually quite similar to the V4, except that this uses the Intel i226 V NIC. Now, that sounds like a very small difference, 225 versus 226, but they are actually a little bit different, and these units are both very different from some of the ones that we've seen previously. Okay, so let's talk about pricing real fast, and this is gonna weird some folks out, but when I actually show you the orders, uh, this one uh, looks silver in the order, gray in the order, and this one looked black in the order, but then when they arrived, they, they had the opposite chassis. When we got the first unit, which was the i226, V4 unit. That one was $307.68. Now I did pay for DHL shipping, so it was actually 30 bucks more than that. Now the other one was like $312, $313, but then I had a couple coupons, so I think I got it for about $307. So suffice to say that these units are basically the same price. And that may sound higher than when you actually go look at AliExpress, but I also just wanted to do something that I hadn't done in a while, and that is order these with 16 gigabytes of memory and also a 256 gig SSD in both of them. We used to do that, I think, in some of the early units that we reviewed in this series. We'll have links in the description to all of the different ones that we've done. But I just kind of wanted to see, you know, what the current state was. We've been providing feedback in these videos. I know some of our form members, we have an awesome form thread on this. If you, you should definitely check out if you want to go buy one of these. But I ended up like saying, hey, why don't we go and do a new order where we actually go and buy some of the memory and storage already built in. These things, if you don't get memory and storage built in are somewhere in the like 155 to maybe like $185 range. So they're much less expensive, but on the other hand, I just kind of wanted to see what we got this time. Now, if you wonder how we're getting the budget to go buy these, one of the ways that you can actually help with that is go down and there's a little join feature that you can do on YouTube and that actually helps us go buy all these units. It's not cheap to go buy these things, so it definitely would help if you could do that. We're gonna use all of the revenue that we get from those memberships to go and buy new units, so hopefully we'll have uh, more coming. And the cool thing about this video is this is the first one that we're gonna do entirely on the set that we got after doing the, you know, getting 100,000 subscribers that said, hey, we need a new set, that's this one. And one of the cool features that I've always wanted, especially for these smaller units, but we've never had the chance to go do it, at least since we were in California, is we now have an overhead camera. So what we're gonna be able to do is actually take these units and show you inside of them real time. With that, let's get to the hardware. Okay, now what I wanna show here is something that is super interesting. This is the front of the unit. And there is differences here that we haven't seen in previous generations of these boxes. This is a V4 box, and uh, there is a reason it is a V4. So the first thing you see is we have the power button, and this lights up, of course, when the unit is on. We have a clear CMOS button, which uh, you don't really see on a lot of systems, but this one actually has that. There are two USB ports. And by the way, if you are using a tiny pilot like we are, you wanna use the USB 3 ports that we're picturing here, not the USB 2 ports on the other side. There's also a USB type C port, which is new in the V4 generation and also in the I226 generation. And then finally, we have the TF card slot. Now, if you're wondering, WTF is the TF card slot. Well, that is actually more like a, I think of like a micro SD card slot. Okay, now in the back of the unit, we can see some definite evolution since the first time that we reviewed these. The first thing that you'll see is we have two USB 2 ports. And then we have both a display port as well as an HDMI port. In the older generation of these, we were lucky if we got one display output. So this is really nice to see. Now, the next feature are the four NIC ports. And when we get inside, you're gonna see that these NICs have actually kind of changed on the motherboard, which I think is super interesting. And so we're gonna talk about that in one second. Okay, now looking at the bottom side of the unit, we can see definitely the newer design trend. Now we have seen some recently that have more of just kind of solid bottoms with maybe some Visa mounting things, but these two units actually have the kind of newer generation of bottom where you see a couple things. So the first thing that you're gonna see is that we have the 40 millimeter, so we have a fan, uh, you, know, you can actually put a fan here if you want. Now these units do run fanless. Some people do, if you especially if you put like hotter SSDs and stuff like that, you will wanna put a fan or you may wanna put a fan. You also get the venting, the 
feet are already applied. Now what you'll see is that both of these units come with these little breakout things right here. And what you actually can do is pop those out if you wanna go put a like SATA drive and you take the little adapter that you have and then you kind of plug it through here and then that kind of allows you to put an external drive. I don't really think uh, many of our users are doing that, but I guess, I guess you could if you wanted to. Something I will note is that neither of these units did come with a visa mount. So some of the older units, they would always come with a visa mount. Now uh, it seems like we're not getting those. Okay, now let's get into the systems and take a look. Okay, so this is just to me, super fun. Let's start with the silver one. I uh, just kind of want to start with this real quick. What you're going to see is that we actually get a DDR4 and a 2666 DIM, which I thought was pretty interesting. You don't always actually get that. And we'll show you the other one in a sec. The other thing that we get is we get the charm store. 256 gig SSD. The one thing I wanna note also is just the fact that these little batteries that are glued in here, this one actually, when this unit arrived, this one was actually flopping around the chassis. So it was just kind of like the little adhesive had stuck, but not to this thing. And so that thing was just kind of rolling around. This one has the exact same mounting and it was not doing that. So I don't really know what was going on. Now, something else that's new on this V4 unit and that's also different on the i226 unit is actually what's under the M.2. So let's kind of get under there for a sec. Now, something you're gonna see is that under that M.2 SSD, slot, we have this new slot right here. Now this is actually a Wi-Fi slot. So these things are actually, instead of kind of looking at WAN options and stuff like that, these things are actually now starting to build in some provisions for Wi-Fi. Now you would have noticed that on the front of the chassis, there are actually little spots. So if you want to go have Wi-Fi antennas and, and like hook those up, you could. And just kind of in this orientation, that's these little nubs that are right up here. Something else that I thought was completely fun is let's take a look at the SSDs here for a moment. Now, because if we go over and we swap over to the i226 version, that SSD, well, man, look at that design on that. That looks so much cooler than the Charm Store SSD. At the same time though, these are Silicon Motion based controller SSDs. And you're gonna see that they look like the PCB is almost exactly the same. So I think they're actually the same SSDs. They're just, you know, marked by different vendors. Something that I noticed with both of these units is that we ordered them with 16 gigs. Now, of course, if you wanna go put two 16 gig DIMMs in there, get 32 gigs, the system will support it. I think that the reason that we get only one SO DIMM per system is actually because, you know, th these, these things are designed to be lower power. And I think having one SO DIMM is less power than having two SO DIMMs. And so having just one in the system for 16 gigs instead of two eight gigs might it also, it's probably also cheaper, but also uh, uses lower power. And that's probably why we see it here. Now, taking out the 16 gigabyte module on the i226, we can see that we got a DDR4 2666 module again, and it's by Utiger again, which is something that we've seen in previous ones when we used to order these fully configured. Now, something you have to watch out for on this memory is that sometimes the vendors actually downclock this memory to 2133 instead of running it at a full 2666 speeds. So if you do order these systems and you don't put two DIMMs in them yourself, something that you do have to worry about or just think about is the fact that you will only have one DIMM and you may only be getting 2133 speeds, not 2666. Now I just wanna show you, I mentioned the fact that you can do a SAT SSD and you can actually mount it to the bottom of the lid. I don't really know if I'd like that because it blocks a lot of airflow, but what you can do is you can actually plug the power in here, the SATA in here, and then that's how you get the SATA connection. Okay, so let's talk about one of the biggest differences between this and some of the older systems that we saw. One of the biggest differences by far is where the NICs are placed. Now you're gonna see that the NICs or the actual ports themselves are pretty much in the same spot that they were in the previous generations. The one thing that is very different though is where the actual NIC chips sit on the motherboard because in the previous generations we would see the NIC chips on this side with the SSD and the memory but that is no longer the case instead they're on the other side of the motherboard with the chip now in both of these units we did get the Intel N5105 units and we're going to explain why in a little bit when we get to our performance section and our power consumption section but I do think that, that is uh, just kind of my favorite uh, of all the options there is a fa faster N6005 option but I just don't think that's worth the extra money and so th this is pretty much what we've been standardizing on a lot of our, our units recently. Now, something that we're not gonna show here, but we're gonna switch to photos to show you because it's a little, little harder to show. But I, one of the biggest challenges by these or with these things is by far has been the cooling. Some folks on like the STH forums have seen that they've gotten units that like the chassis wasn't actually in contact with the chips and stuff like that. Like, so you have like your, your, your N5105 and you don't have any like thermal paste or anything between that and the, and the actual chassis. So like your, your ability to remove heat is just terrible in that case. We haven't actually gotten that in any of ours, which 
has been pretty nice, but we have seen a lot of reports about different uh, folks with horror stories on how these things are actually connected. Now, the challenge, of course, is the fact that once we break them, we will be adding new thermal paste, and then we've changed how the actual units, uh, you know, perform and stuff because we'll be having, you know, different thermal paste or whatever. But I just wanted to kind of point out that we can take a look into these, and I'm going to show you two things real quick. Now, on both of these units, I just mentioned the NYX. And if you look at the NYX, because they're now on the other side, they now have a little block that transfers heat, in theory, from the NYX to the chassis. The NYX themselves are very low wattage. I think they're like, like I don't know, one, two watts, something like that. But they're not, they're not, not huge wattage parts, but you do have four of them. So it is nice that there is a new way to go cool that. And that also means that that is being directly cooled by the chassis. So what you're not getting is you're not getting that heat dumping into the bottom of the chassis where the SSD and the SO DIMM sit. Now, if we flip the system around, you can see that we have the little cooler blocks or the little copper blocks that take heat from the N5105 and put that into the chassis itself. Now, there are other versions of this chassis like the ones that we saw when we did the Core i7 six port models where you can get the heat pipe models. And that's something that, you know, th this is not the heat pipe model. At the same time though, I think that for an N5105, this is actually not too bad. Running these things, just leaving them running and stuff like that. We've had them running for a couple of weeks, both Rohit and I. And frankly, you can still pick them up, no problem, even when they're you know just kind of sitting around and been plugged in for a while. So I do think that these are not too bad. I would you probably give them a little cooling off if you do have to move them. But overall, um, you know they have worked fine. We've been running them for weeks now, and we haven't had any issues with stability or anything. Still, I just wanted to show you that because that is a big question that we get, and there's a giant form thread on this. So again, we'll link that in the description. Okay, so let's talk about performance now. And this is now, I guess, a lot later in the series, right? We've taken a look at probably a dozen of these things at this point or close to that. So we've seen, you know, the Pentium N6005. We saw also seen up to like the Core i7 versions of these. We've seen down to the N5095. And then these, which are the 5105 units. Personally, my favorite CPU in this is by far the 5105. When we get to performance, you're gonna see that you definitely do lose a little bit compared to the N6005. You also get more than the N5095, and it's kind of in that nice sweet spot between these. Now, a lot of folks will say, hey, I really wanna go spend that extra money to get that extra little bit of performance. But frankly, when you start looking at the amount of money that you're spending to get that N6005, the fact that you have a little bit, usually extra thermal issues and power issues, I just kind of think that this is a much better value. And if you're really concerned about performance, then go check out our Core i7 version because those things are way faster than these. Now in the background, we actually run a lot more benchmarks than we are showing in this video, but I do want to say that we did run both of these side by side and back back. And what we basically saw was that they were within 1% of each other. So I would say that effectively, these are very similar systems in terms of performance. I don't think that you're going to get a faster one if you get the, like the Intel i226 NICs versus if you get the Intel i225 ones. Overall though, I think this is a great form factor for a lot of folks. Now, when it comes to power consumption, I wanted to do something that's a little bit different because we actually got two new power adapters. With the silver unit, we got this Dajing unit. And then on the black unit, which is the i226 one, we actually got a light on power supply, which I was like, wow, I've actually seen many nice servers with light on power supplies. So I was pretty impressed by the fact that like I actually recognized a name brand for one of these. Also, I do like these uh, where, where you don't just have the little wall wart and you actually have the little uh, bit in the middle because I just kind of think this is a little easier to go put on like, uh, you know, like UPSs and stuff like that when you have this kind of configuration. So I was pretty excited to see that we got the light on unit. But I guess my question was like, is one of these power supplies better better than the old ones that we saw. The old ones, by the way, were these, these things were like replaceable AC adapter generic units. And those things were absolutely terrible. Uh, we saw like really high power consumption because of those, but we're definitely see a lot better power consumption here. So what I decided to do was uh, we're gonna use the overhead view. And in this overhead view, I put the power meter because I couldn't figure out how to hang the power meter from trussing on the new set. So instead we just have the power meter on the overhead shot. And what I wanted to do is look at the difference between the two power or the two units and see, is there a difference in terms of idle power between the i225 and i226? And then I also wanted to see if there's a big difference between these two power adapters. And so first with the silvery gray unit, we use the Jing power adapter. And you know, when this thing finally, you know, gets into its groove and finally hits idle, we're seeing about 6.5, 6.4, 6.5 watts, somewhere in there. And just kind of saying that this is a several watts lower than the replacement AC adapter would be on a unit like this. And then we put on the light on power supply and we put it onto the black unit, which is the I226 unit. And we saw a pretty similar, just kind of in terms of like five 
5, 6.5-ish, plus or minus maybe 0 0.1, 0 0.2 watts. So we're pretty darn close between the two different power adapters and the two different units. But I guess the question is, what happens if uh, if we took the Dejing power adapter and put it onto the i226, or put the light on one onto the i225 one? And so we actually did that exercise. And when we did it, we saw that, again, we're still not like 6.4 to 6.7 watt idle range. So in the top end, I think we hit 20 watts like once, but most of the time we were in that like 18 to 20 watt range. With the replacement AC adapter, just to kind of give some idea, I think we were in like the 10, in a configuration like this, we're in the 10 to 12 watt range idle. And then we go into like the 24, 25 watt range at max. So in most of these videos, I've been giving feedback. And I know a lot of our readers have been giving feedback about how bad those old replacement AC adapters were. In fact, some, some of the ones that we have, um, you know, they all have worked for us, but I have gone and actually gotten some Meanwell uh, replacement units and just kind of, you know, plugged them in. These things are DC 12 volt input. So it's not really that hard to go get a replacement adapter for 15, 20 bucks. But, um, you know, just frankly, the replacement AC adapters, like these, the old ones used to come with, were not good. The newer versions seem to be a lot better actually, which was something that was a kind of a cool finding. So at this point, you're probably looking at these two units and thinking to yourself, Hey, Patrick, these things look exactly, I mean, they're basically exactly the same. What is the real difference between the i225 and i226? We ran three different software packages on these. We tried OPN Sense, we tried PF Sense 2.6 and also 2.7 development. And then we also tried Proxmox as our virtualization thing. Now on both of these units, the latest Proxmox, absolutely no issue. Also OPN Sense, no issue. And we'll just kind of show you that. But the one that we did run into a little bit of challenges with was PF Sense. Now PF Sense actually worked no problem on this unit over here because we were using PF Sense 2.6. Now PF Sense 2.6 supports the Intel i225 v NICs, which are in here, but they do not support, it does not support yet the newer Intel i226 NICs. OPN Sense is based on a newer version of FreeBSD that hopefully we'll get in PF Sense 2.7. But um, since since uh, while we were testing it, 2.6 was the latest one out, that actually led us to a weird uh, kind of result where this one, uh, the i225 v4 one, this worked out of the box with OPN Sense, it worked with PF Sense, and it worked with Proxmox. This one, which is the i226, only worked out of the box with OPN Sense and Proxmox. Of course, when we get the new version of PF Sense, this one we expect to fully work, and it does work with the development builds. But I just want to go point that out that we did do the testing on all of these, and that's what you see. Now, if you do run these things virtualized with PF Sense and you're not passing through the NICs, then uh, you know it probably probably doesn't matter to you. Uh, because you're now exposing a virtual NIC to PF Sense, but I just want to point that out. And these things, by the way, have plenty of power to go and actually go and virtualize. When we ran both the virtualized as well as bare metal, we were able to get two and a half gig Ethernet speeds uh, over the two pairs of links. So we basically, you know, kind of ran in one out the other, and we did that uh, for both pairs. And then what we basically found was that these things were perfectly capable of saturating those links, even with the N. 5105 and we can do that virtualized. So I guess what's the key lesson learned? I think the key lesson learned one, uh, these things have gotten a lot better since the first ones that we reviewed. We reviewed these things uh, a while ago and they were uh, definitely a lot lot more rough than the ones that we're seeing today. We just kind of note that that's, that's, that's definitely better how the NICs are placed, how we see the, you know, the actual thermal management, I think is much improved in these versions. I hope you really enjoyed this look at both of these four two and a half gig Ethernet AliExpress units. Um, I think that frankly, these units have come a long way and I'm really a big fan of the newer versions of these. Now I know some of you are gonna be looking on AliExpress and you're gonna see, hey, there's these new J6412 and 6413 ones. Patrick, are you gonna look at those? And the answer to that is yes, you can see those. Uh, these are the boxes for those actually. One of the weird things was it took so long for those things to ship. I mean, it took like, I think like over a month for them to even start start the shipping process. And so they sent me a note saying, hey, we're upgrading your J6412 uh, to a 6413 free. And I was like, ah, oh, okay, um, that's great. But but I actually kind of wanted both so I could show you the performance of both. So unfortunately uh, we, we have two of the same, which is uh, not super useful for what we're doing, but uh, you know, we'll, we'll definitely do a review of these pretty soon. And hey, if you did like this video, well, why don't you give it a like, click subscribe and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.